Hey guys, how are you doing? Praise the Lord, saints, praise the Lord. Um, so I'm super late, super, 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 super late. Let me hop on the scope of Periscope and uh, just real quick. So we're gonna have a broadcast tomorrow because I don't wanna lose um, what we were doing or what we're trying to do. Um, so, hey, Mr. Wade, how are you doing? It's a good day anyhow. It's a good day anyhow. So we're having some technical difficulties, but I had a really great surprise tonight. And we're going to do it tomorrow about six hour time. About six hour time. Um, I don't know if there's something going on with the internet or whatever, but we just had a really, really hard time. So we've been troubleshooting technology and the internet for the last hour and a half. And it just didn't work out very well. So tomorrow at uh, about six-ish, we're going to try again. And you really, really, really want to um, tune in because this is really, really good. And so that's why we troubleshooted for like an hour and a half. So I don't know how stable the internet is right now. I don't know what's really going on. Hey, guys, how are you doing? Hey, Denise. Hey, Denise. Hey, India, Sarita, Donna, I see you. Um, so I, I apologize, but I was really trying to listen. This is so good. So I don't want to even, hey, Stephanie, hey, Mama Joyce, I do not want to spoil this. So we're going to try again tomorrow at um, six. So it'll be a little earlier, but so you get like two hashtag best week ever, right? So um, I'm going to act like, hey, Joanne, I'm going to act like, it never happened. I'm going to act like it never happened. And so I want you to go to Joshua chapter six. I want you to go to Joshua chapter six. We're going to pray this tonight. We're not going to be on super long because it is kind of super late, even though all we've got is time and opportunity, but you know, time and opportunity. So we're going to be in Joshua chapter six. Um, it's a new week. Um, I pray all is well. I pray that you are in a place of expectation. Um, yeah, yeah. Hey, Chari, how are you doing? So tomorrow at 6 p.m., we're either going to be on um, Facebook or we're going to be on Periscope. And I'll let you know. It just depends on, hey, Santonese, it just depends on how the Internet is doing and if the um, if the app wants to act right and it didn't want to act right today. So I don't want to spoil it. I don't want to spoil it. So we're just going to act like it never happened. I'm not even going to talk about what it is because it's so good. It's going to bless your socks off. So today let's just pray and let's be blessed by what the word of the Lord is. You saw the post that I put up earlier about Joshua chapter six and the prophetic act. If you didn't do it, let's talk about it a little bit, if that's okay, if that's okay. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we just bless you for what you're gonna speak and say. We thank you, Father, that you give us an ear to hear what thus saith the Lord in this time and season. We bless you, God, because we don't believe in coincidences, but we believe that all things work together. All things um, are, 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 are jointly fit together, and so it is well. So speak, Holy Spirit, your servants are listening. Hey, Elder Bass, Pastor. Pastor Bass, I see you. Hey, Pastor Darlene. Hallelujah. So we're going to be in Joshua chapter six. I just want to submit this to you. Um, just want to submit this to you tonight. And we're just going to pray it um, a little bit. But as you um, go into this week, I want you to kind of think and decree. But we have to do it with um, purpose and we have to do it um, with with wisdom and with knowledge, if that makes sense. So get your, pay your paper um, and your Bible because I want you to look at it for yourself. Hallelujah. I want you to look at it for yourself. And I want you to consider what God is saying, especially in the times that we're in right now. What is God saying? What does God want me to do? And how do I move through this? How do I move through this? Right. So when we talk about the times and the seasons that we're in now, um, there are let me say it like this, because I, I don't want to be confusing. There is the season of Moses and then there is the season of Joshua, but it's all one trip, right? There's a season of Moses and then there's a season of Joshua, but it's all one trip. It's all one story. It's all one continuum, but it has different chapters. 
it has different chapters. I pray that makes sense, right? And so if we get stuck on coming out, if we get stuck on wilderness, if we get stuck on, right, um, going in, those are just chapters in one story. Those are chapters in one prophetic narrative. Come here, Jesus. If we talk about just the death, right, then we have to talk about the burial. Then we have to talk about the resurrection. And then we have to talk about the ascension right so it's all these are all parts that you can't pull one without talking about the other you cannot take one out without if we talk about people going to the cross well we have to the cross is with is not without come on the the death the burial the resurrection and the ascension right so it's all one continuum all of the pieces come together all of the pieces fit together all of it is part of the story if you take one out it is incomplete it is truncated right and so it is um in this time where everybody's you know talking about uh the exodus the exodus is also an invasion the exodus is also an invasion we cannot go out without going in the plan the heartbeat of god was to go in and so when other in, in order to bring them in god had to bring them out right god was always looking at in god was always looking at in god was always looking at the covenant right so if we're talking about what should I be praying? What should I what should I be decreeing? What is God saying? We talked about this a little bit last week when we talk about the prophetic, right? When I look at the cycles of God, that is prophetic. When I when I'm calling, when I'm like, what's next? When I understand the cycles of the story of the Father, when I look at the pattern of God, that becomes prophetic in nature because we're looking at how God governs time, the seasons of man. Our times and our seasons are in the hand of God, right? That's the scripture. So when we look at, when we back up, we got to go beyond, right? We've got to go beyond the children of Israel in Egypt. And we've got to go to the time that God cut covenant with Abram, with Abram. Let me know that y'all are with me. Say something, right? Let's, let's just call and response. We're just having a good time tonight. Hallelujah. We're having a good time tonight, right? So when we talk about uh, how Egypt even came to be, we have to back up to the covenant. And so when God is talking to Abraham or Abram, he tells him of his descendants being in Egypt for 400 years, right? So the descendants being in Egypt for 400 years was just a pit stop going to the land that was promised Abraham, Isaac, right? Jacob, right? And so when we talk about this covenant, God talks about this land that I swear unto your fathers, this land I swore unto your fathers. Take this, write it down. This land I swore unto your fathers. So the tunnel vision of the heartbeat of God, God's heartbeat is tunnel vision for your life. The covenant that's over your life is tunnel vision. The covenant that is over your life is tunnel vision. God watches over his covenant. God keeps his covenant. He is the covenant keeping God. So everywhere that I may go, the covenant is the tunnel vision for my life. We're only going one place. I pray this is making sense. Y'all are awfully quiet. We're only going one place, right? And so though they were in captivity, like Mama Joyce is saying, though they were in captivity, the tunnel vision of God was to lead them to a land that flows with milk and honey, and they were to occupy this land forever and ever and ever, right? In Abraham, all of the nations of the earth are blessed. So in other words, I have to bring a nation. Am I yelling at y'all? Good. I have to bring a nation out of this captivity because all of the nations, even though this nation is in slavery, even though this nation is upside down and inside out, even though this nation right looks like it's on the bottom even though they look like a bunch of nobodies even though you know they're sheep herders they're slaves they're making a uh, uh, brick out of straw they don't look like much of nothing in this nation that is in slavery in this nation that is upside down and inside out all the other nations of the earth are blessed right also so god's god's heartbeat for humanity is that all of the nations will be blessed
right? And so he's got to bring them out, even though he put them in, right? He put them in to bring them out. And so the tunnel vision of God was always the land that flows with milk and honey. So if you're taking notes, what is the covenant that's over my life that God is keeping? Right. And why? Why does that matter? Because that's going to keep you when you understand what God is keeping. What is God keeping? God was not tripping about Egypt. God was not tripping about bringing them out. God had always, always, always it's tucked inside of the covenant that he cut with the forefathers of the forefather of the person of the people who were in captivity. God's heartbeat, God's mind, God's eye, God's word was with a land, was in a land that he had given unto the people. God said it, God meant it. So every other place, every other thing that they moved through was just like a stoplight to God hallelujah so it's, it's like you you in your car and you drive into a destination it's like in life right in life when you're driving you don't count the stop signs you don't count the stop lights you barely even realize look at the stop signs and the stop lights your mind is on the destination even if you have to stop and get gas even if you've got to stop and pick somebody up even if you've got to stop and mail a letter even if you've got to stop you don't stay there why? Because I've got a destination. I've got tunnel vision. When traffic hits and you have to sit there for, you make sure if I'm meeting somebody here, let me text you and tell you, listen, that it says in the destination, the GPS says that there's a 30 minute slowdown. Are y'all, are y'all with me? There's a 30 minute slowdown. I'm going to be there in 30 minutes, but I'm on my way. They may say, okay, now what's your ETA now? What's your estimated time of arrival? What is your, what is your estimated time of arrival? And so the same way that we have this tunnel vision, when we get in our car, when we turn on the ignition, we know where we are going. So it is with life inside of the covenant. God is saying right now, I pray y'all are with me. God is saying, right now you've got to get in the car turn the ignition and put in the gps the prophetic covenant that is over your life the prophetic covenant that is over your lineage why does this matter this is not about let me and my lineage pop my collar let this is not about me and my lineage we're gonna be millionaires gazillionaires all of the nations come here uh children of israel all of the nations shall be blessed in you Hallelujah. And so when you look at what God is doing with you, when you understand that prophetic narrative, come here, prophetic narrative. When you were in that church service and they said, come here, ma'am, sir, lift your hands. Thus saith the Lord. You've got to get it out of your mindset that when God said, thus saith the Lord, it was not a little bitty pat you on the head because you are cute. This is what I'm telling you. It is a command. God is saying, this is the place where you are to have dominion. This is the place where I have said belongs to you. This is your sphere of influence. God is saying when you get the word of the Lord, I need you to take this serious. I need you to become this. I need you to put this on. Why? Because all of the nations, come on. All of the nations in your sphere of influence will be blessed as you function in this. And so that's why you can't get caught up with what's going on in this construct of Egypt. That's why you can't come out here, come on, in the wild place and think that this is the final destination. This is not where we are going to pitch our tent. Yes, will everything after this be different? Well, I hope so. I hope so. When we look at the pattern of God, let's not look at the pattern of nations. Let's not talk about the times and the seasons of man, but let's look at the times and the seasons that man has got to walk in because the pattern of God is over the nations. Will everything be different? Absolutely. freaking lutely Why? Because there's been a shift in the heavenlies. So therefore there's a shift in the, in the earth. There's a shift in the people of God. Come here children of Israel. I pray this is good. I pray I'm yelling at you real good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why? Because we've got to shake ourselves. What you do, listen, and, I, and, I, and I'm trying not to go back to tomorrow what's going to happen. The, the, the Lord woke me up all night last night. All night last night, he kept saying this, shelter in place. Shelter in place. Every time I would wake up, all I would hear was 
shelter in place, shelter in place, shelter in place, shelter in place. That's all I heard. That's all I heard. This morning, I got up and I heard God say, shelter in place. He said, what they hear is, it's a, it, they're telling them to stay at home. What I'm telling you, shelter in place, is your shelter is in place. Your shelter is in place. That's why for 400 years you remained. That's why for 400 years you were not wiped out. That's why for 400 years you kept going shelter in place. When we look at Psalms 91, 1, he who abides, come on, come on, he who dwells. Uh, and so God is saying the shelter is in place. It's, it's called my presence. Uh, shelter is in place. It's called my wings. Uh, shelter is in place. It's called my pinions. Uh, shelter is in place. It's called my covenant shelter in place. Shelter to this. And so, so the father is saying the prophetic narrative over your life is shelter in place. So no matter what is happening right now, God is saying for you, you're not to get caught up in that shelter in place. What you do in your dwelling has got to be different from what they do in their dwelling because God says when we come out of this, everything is going to be different. And so the shelter in place, God says, I put upon you because you will be their shelter in place in place come on come on come on come on and so the little things that you think you've got and the little things that God has talked to you about times before come here children of Israel so they had over their lives before they even went into captivity that they they had a there was already an expiration date that called time there was already an expiration date before they ever went into captivity because God said at the place of the covenant he said and your descendants will be in bondage and he gave him the year they would be if there was already an expiration date in place. Why? Because God was doing something in the land. God says, come here, uh, Adam. Come here, Adam. When we see the prophetic hand of God, when we understand how God works, God does not bring you to your sphere of influence and it's dry, it's empty. God does not bring you to your sphere of influence and there is nothing there. And so for 400 years, could it be that God was putting giants in the land because he said, by the time they get here, I need them to steward something that they, that, that, that the earth has never seen. I need them to walk into something that's already prepared for 2.5 million people. I know the number, saith the Lord, of the people who will come in. I understand what this invasion is going to look like. Come on, guys. Hallelujah. And so there was, before they, they jo, jo, there was a Joseph, there was an expiration date. Come on, guys. Before the name changing, there was an expiration date. Before Israel was Israel, there was an expiration date. Come on, guys. There was an expiration date for when they were in and how they and so God was not looking at where they had to be or where they were going to be. God is always keeping watching over to perform come on, what he said inside of the covenant. What is the covenant that God has cut with you? Why? Because we got to have tunnel vision. We got to have tunnel vision. And so what is God saying to you behind closed doors while they are sheltering in place because they're scared? God is saying to you, uh, 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 say, decree, write, remind, what is your shelter in place? The shelter in place is what has kept you this long. The shelter in place is what has got you to this moment. This is your defining moment. This is the moment where you're getting ready to invade, baby. This is the moment where you're getting ready to invade systems and bring back the blessing to the systems and bring back the blessing to the mountains. And so God said, I had to keep you. God said, I had to hold you. God said, I had to hide you in an economy. I had to hide you in a construct because if the enemy saw what was getting ready to be released, then the fight against you, I hid you, I hid you, I hid you, says God. But now the shelter that was in place, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Has is what has got you here. And so while they are sheltering, come here, uh, Joshua chapter uh, 6 verse 1. 
Y'all there? Now Jericho, so they, they've invaded, okay? So if you're taking notes, I need you to stop using words like crossover. Because I, I think that kind of that kind of softens what's really happening right now. When the children of Israel crossed over, that was, was really shit. It was an invasion upon resources. It was an invasion upon territory. They were putting out. They were evicting. So here it is. You have all of these different groups. You have all of these different principalities. Come on, guys. You have all of these different rulers. You have all of this different stuff that is happening in the promised land. 0.5 million people. Now think about your little town. Think about your little zip code. Right. When we were talking about uh, immigration and we were talking about bringing in people from Syria and people were like, we don't have the resources for them. We, uh, we, we barely have an economy for us. Where are we going to get the extra for them? Where are we going to get the housing? Where are we going to get the health care? 2.5 million people came from out of nowhere. And so all these people are chilling. All these people, they're, they're, they're doing their thing. All these people ha are doing life as usual. And here come 2.5 million people coming into what God says is theirs. God said, come on in. Joshua's bringing them on in. And so they get in. And here it is. We're in Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now Jericho. Are y'all there? Now Jericho was straightly shut up. Because, y'all follow with me? Y'all looking at your Bible? Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. That kosha. They were sheltering in place. They were sheltering in place. Come on. They were sheltering in place because the children, does your Bible say that? Look at your Bible. Does your Bible say that? Because of the children of Israel, nobody came in Jericho and nobody went out of Jericho. They were sheltering in place because they were under siege. The children of Israel were just crossing over. They were just crossing over. They were just doing what God said to do. They were just putting one foot in front of the other. They had just come out of the wilderness. They were born in the wilderness and they heard stories about Egypt from Caleb and Joshua and from the people who died out. But this was of the new generation. This was the generation who was uh, sanctified, come on, consecrated to go in, plus J J Joshua and Caleb. So here it is. They move it in. 2.5 million of them. And Jericho said, shore up the walls. Jericho said, everybody sit down and don't nobody move. Whatever is behind this wall will stay behind this wall. And we're not going out there because we are being invaded. Koshanda, we are being invaded. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Now, when they were in the wilderness and God was saying to Joshua, all right, come on, come on, let's get it. We're about to go in. He didn't really reveal to Joshua that about Jericho yet. Right? He just said, listen, it's time to go in. It's time to go in. So they get there and they cannot go further. So y'all see now I put another post up about and I need you to go get up uh, about a stone wall or stone walling. So stone walling is a barrier that you cannot get past to get into or to move into or to move deeper into the dimensions, the assignment, the authority, because there's a stone wall in place. There's something without a door. There's something not letting you in. That's what Jericho represented. God gave them the whole land. So they get in, come on guys, and there's this huge city that has now shut everything up because they feel like they are being invaded. They are sheltering in place. But God is talking to Joshua and he says, no, 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 there's a shelter in place for y'all called the covenant. Am I yelling at y'all and got excited? I need y'all to see what's happening right now in the earth. Listen, 
when, when you hear the news and somebody whose ear is not sanctified and consecrated hears the news, two different things are happening. There are two different reports. There are two different issues that are happening. So the enemy is just trying to keep them. He ain't really worried about that. That report is just, you know what I'm saying? But for the people whose ear has been sanctified, the people who got a word over their life and they know it, the people who have a word over their lineage and they engaged it, the people who have the audacity, the people who have the audacity to pray in what thus saith the Lord, the enemy is saying, listen, 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 there's a Jericho. There's a Jericho. And so in 2020, what would that look like? When you was in 2019, God said such and such and thus and thus. When you was in 2017, God said that you're getting ready to go and you're getting ready to move and you're getting ready to do and there's going to be a complete turnaround. And so when you get to 2018, 19, 20, you know what I'm saying? You're like, well, the prophet lied, the people lied, da 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 If we're looking at what God told Abraham, if we didn't understand that there was a covenant, it would look like God was lying. It would look like God was lying when he talked to Isaac. It would look like God was lying when he talked to Jacob. It would look like God was lying. But no, 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 no. He's, it's all about timing. It's all about timing. Listen. And so God, what he'll do is he'll let you know this is what's getting ready to happen. God will say this. I mean, really what it is, is, is God is, it's a warning. We call it grace, which it is. It's grace because it's a warning. God is saying you need to prepare. God is not prepared for just leanness. But the, listen, when the children of Israel invaded, the Bible says the manna ceased. The grace of manna ceased. The minute they crossed over, the manna ceased. What they have been existing on for 40 years. What they got every day, six days a week. Just like that. Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? So the economy that everybody's going up and down and all around the recession that they're talking about is not the same recession that we're talking about. They're talking about recession. We're talking about responsibility. We're talking about responsibility, right? When the minute they, they invaded, the manna ceased. Why? Because now it's time to sow. Now it's time to reap. Now it's time to work. So they're talking about a recession. They scared about the invasion. God is saying, well, the manna is getting ready to cease. Are you ready? The manna is going to cease when you put your foot when you get your foot in the thing that I swore unto you, what's been sustaining you is going to cease. I need y'all to see this. I need y'all to see this. I need y'all to see y'all see this, right? And so what he'll do is he'll speak a word to you in 2020, 2010, and then 2011, he'll say it again. But what's happening is we'll be like, it's now, it's now, it's now, it's now. And God's like, no, 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 it's not now. It's not now. It's not now. I got to give you a plan and I got to get you a strategy. And I need you to submit some things. I need you to go through deliverance for some things. I need you to get some character in some things. Why? Because when you get there, you're going to be managing. When you get there, you're going to be overseeing. When you get there, you're going to feel like this is big. This is bigger than what I thought. This is bigger than anything I've ever seen. This is bigger than anything that I've ever embraced. Come here, children of Israel. They had never owned anything. So they went from not having nothing to having even less in the wilderness. They were born with stories of leeks and onions. And now they're born and all they've known is manna. All they've known is manna. That's all you know. That's all you know. You don't know nothing about no grape. You don't know nothing about no corn. You don't know nothing about that. You don't know nothing about no milk. You don't know nothing about no honey. Baby, all you've had is manna. Manna when you was two. Manna to when you was 22. 32. Now you're 38. You cross over and the manna's gone. If you don't know what you're looking at, you will think it's a recession. And it's not a recession, it's responsibility. It ain't a, ah, it's not a recession, it's responsibility. 
Read the Bible. Listen, listen. Before they crossed over, God had Joshua circumcise all of the men who were in the who were born in the wilderness. And they had to all go to their tent and wait till they were healed. Listen. Listen, do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? Do y'all see this? I pray this is good. I pray this is good. Because of responsibility, you're, you're, you're going to be sheltered in place. There's a shelter in place, but it's contingent upon the covenant. It's contingent upon the covenant. So God gave them grace. He said, Joshua, get it right. Joshua, get it right. Joshua, there's a, you know what's supposed, Joshua, a man of them circumcised. Joshua, this is what I need you to do. I need you. I'm going to give you some grace. And there's going to be some circumcision. And then every man, everybody's going to go in their tent. I need y'all to see this. And they're going to heal for them because when we go in, it's not recession, it's responsibility. It's not recession, it's responsibility. Gosh, I pray y'all see this. 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 They have, they were herdsmen. The children of Israel were herdsmen. They were farmers, right? God is saying, I have given you a land. That by lineage, you guys are herdsmen and farmers, but you ain't never seen nothing like this. You've never seen anything like this. And so there's going to be enough store. The Bible says that they found storehouses of corn that was already harvested. There's going to be enough to sustain you for a minute. And then y'all are going to have to keep going and planting and settling and doing because now it is. Come here, Adam. Come here, Adam. Come here, Adam. Come on. When the, the Bible says that rain hadn't come upon the garden because God didn't have somebody to manage or to watch over the garden. Right. So he because when the rain comes, that means that's when things are getting ready to grow. And he said, be fruitful, multiply, and have dominion. So that's responsibility. That's not recession. It's responsibility. And so God is saying to us tonight, listen, 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 listen. Do you see what's happening? Do you see what's happening? The reports that are being released are to discourage you, to make you feel like and think that you're about to fall into recession when God says, no, you're about to stand up in responsibility. This is your greatest moment. This is your greatest time of responsibility. This is what you've been in training for. This is why your prayer life got to where it is. This is why you had to understand disappointment. This is why you had to have things taken away. This is why you had to learn some stuff and build some character because God is saying now you've got the responsibility of occupying this. You got the responsibility of occupying and defending. You've got the responsibility of invading and then defending. I pray this is making sense. So in Joshua chapter one, we see that the people of Jericho were sheltering in place. They were sheltering in place because there was an invasion of the people of God. They were sheltering in place because there was an invasion of the covenant. Oh God. So what would happen if for the next seven days, Right? The triumphant entry of Jesus into Jerusalem happened, of, you know, man's timetable yesterday. Listen, right? So that what if, what if, what if, so when we look at this, if we compare the two, Jesus invaded on a donkey. He invaded. Come on, guys. He invaded. He was invading the system. Why? Because he was at the, he was getting ready to walk in and move in the real release from heaven to earth. I pray y'all see this. This was it for him. We're getting ready to see the fulfillment, the fulfillment of the plan of redemption. Come on, right? So what would happen if for the next seven days, we said that the covenant of God is invading. They're sheltering in place. Our shelter is in place. 
So that's what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to, it's going to make you, it's going to cause you to pull what thus saith the Lord over your life out and not think that God was just patting you on the head and saying, when, when God, there are some people on here that God said that you are a fortune 500 company. There's some people on here that you have the word over your life that your company will have stocks traded. That's not God pointing you, uh, patting you on the head. That's God saying that, listen, you are an employer. That you are, you are of the, of the ones, come on, you are of the group who will employ people. You are of the group who will give people good health insurance and good dental insurance. God says that you are the innovator. You are the innovator invasion to what's happening out here in these streets. And so God is saying that little bitty idea that you think is so little bitty what I was talking about and so you got to stop thinking like you a grasshopper in your own sight that enough of that we've been down that road we've been there done that got the t-shirt now you've got to understand oh baby the kingdom is arising oh baby the kingdom is arising and the sound of invasion the covenant is invading the covenant is invading the covenant is invading no I'm, not, I'm invading. My creativity is invading. No, no, no. The covenant is invading. Why? Because God watches over the covenant. Oh, baby, the covenant is invading. God is making room and space for the and I see how big the fruit is when I see how big the livestock is come on if we've got big fruit it means we've got big trees if we've got big trees it means we've got big grass if we've got big grass it means we've got big soil if we've got big soil big grass big trees big fruit it means we've got big animals Come on, come on, come on. And so God is saying, I had you guys hear the story because it's the wild place. I had you guys hear the story of the 12 spies of your mothers and fathers went into the land and they saw giants and they said, we are grasshoppers in our own sight. We're not ready for this. We can't do this. And so now you have grown up under the tutelage of Joshua and Caleb and you are ready, baby. You are excited to go in and when you see what you are to go, and when you see what you are to manage, you will not back back and say, well, I don't know. These animals are mighty big. I've never seen a cow this big. I've never seen a horse this big. I've never seen a company uh, uh, that does, that makes thread be publicly traded. I'm making this up, right? Because something so small, something so minute, something so insignificant now is coming in and crossing over to a really big industry. Do y'all see the correlation, right? And so you're thinking about my small little business and this big old economy and this big old industry. I'm just going to be a hundred air and God is saying no sweetie you're going to be a Google air a number with a hundred zeros behind it it's not about the money but God is saying I'm setting up systems that will sustain what will come behind you you are a pioneer of the next 50 years the covenant is invading. The covenant is invading. God is saying that businesses and economies and government, yes, Sabri Sabria, the kingdom of God is the domain. It is the rule of God. It is the reign of God. It is the principles of God. It is the heartbeat of God. It is the word of God. And it is the work of God. Everything is shifting and changing. Why? Because the covenant is invading. Mashoko. The covenant covenant is invading. The covenant is invading. And so what would happen if you put your hands on your belly and you said, I believe what the scripture has declared and out of my belly go flow covenant. Out of my belly is, belly is going to flow rivers of water. This is not about me building a bigger barn. This is not about me having rapper chains and my car sitting on twenties. This is about the next 50 years. Come here, Publix. Holly, am I yelling at y'all? I didn't get, I didn't got excited. I didn't got excited. Listen, listen, come here, Publix. Most people don't know this. If you have a Publix in your area, Publix was birthed during the Great Depression. Publix was birthed. Publix was incorporated. Publix came on the scene during the Great Depression. During, and here it is. They're still here. We're still buying our toilet paper from where Publix. We're still buying our fruit from where Publix. We're still going to Publix. Publix has seen ebb and flow. They've been up and down, but they was born in the season of adversity. 
They saw an opportunity. They sold fruit. That's what they did. During the Great Depression, they sold fruit. That's what they did. And so here it is. Now they're selling toilet paper. Now they're known in the industry. They may not be Whole Foods, but they are the bridge between Kroger and Whole Foods. We go to Publix. Listen, they were birth during a time when everything was changing. They were the bridge to the new thing. Could it be that God is saying, while well, they are sheltering in place, your shelter is in place now baby birth now baby right now baby do because you when this comes up are invading the economies you are invading the systems come here come here in the name of jesus i need y'all to see this hallelujah those little ideas that you thought were little they're not little the covenant they're covenant that little book you said was a little book it ain't a little book baby covenant what if everything you did for the next three weeks you said this is covenant every time you sat down you said i'm sending a covenant email i am i am on linkedin doing a covenant thing i am making a covenant class i'm causing and creating covenant products what if you saw part of the covenant a worker of the covenant and you took the responsibility off you and you said this is a covenant thing what if every time you sat down to pray, you said, well, let me pray covenant prayers. Let me decree covenant decrees. Come on. Let me strategize the covenant strategy. Let me plan the covenant plan. What if, what if, what if you did something different? What if you said something different? What if you invaded? I didn't got excited. I'm all some somewhere else. And so we see, we see, we see that the systems, Koshanda, the systems that were in place began to shelter in place because they were invaded. What if the enemy was cutting up and cutting loose because he understood the kingdom was invading? What if? Remember, the enemy cannot do anything of his own. He does not create anything. He only models and mimics. What if there was such a glory that was being released? What if? And the enemy was trying to draw, seduce your eyes, seduce your heart, seduce your courage to shutting down. What if? What if Jericho, do y'all see this? Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of you. Now the markets are straightly shut up because of you. Now education is straightly shut up because of you. If every one of us, like the children of Israel, ran into the land that was swore unto us and our lineage, every one of us is carrying the covenant. Can you imagine the sound of 2.5 million pairs of feet. Can you just imagine that sound? That's the sound in the realm of the spirit. The covenant is invading. The covenant is invading. Your shelter in place is not their shelter in place. Your shelter in place is not their shelter in place. Your shelter in place Right now is the Lord saying, we got to get this last little bit. We got to get this last little bit of circumcision because it's all covenant, baby. And that which is uncircumcised cannot go in to the covenant. There's got to be an agreement. There's got to be an agreement. So could it be that the father has shut everything down because he says when the curtain goes back, everything's going to be changed? And you're supposed to be on deck. And the word of the Lord that's over your life 
It's not the Lord, heaven, patting you on the head saying, ooh, you so sweet and you so cute. It's God saying that I put a pin in your hand and your business, your work, your ministry, who you are, your lineage is getting ready to write out the GPS for the next 50 years. I'm turn left, your turn right. Elder Bass is at the stop sign, make another right. All of us coming together is the GPS for the destination for the next 70 years. It's not about us playing, it's not about small, it's not about ego, it's not about who got and what got, and when they all went over, they were all of the same rank. They were all of the same position. It's covenant. You do you, and I'ma do me, and we all do a covenant. So listen, I just wanna pray for y'all. I just want to pray for you. I said on the post, I want you to look at both. I want you to understand stonewalling. Look it up for yourself. Stonewalling is really another type of the spirit of delay. So really when the children of Israel invaded, we're going to use that word, when they invaded the promised land, the spirit of delay was present. Do y'all see that? Don't just think that your curtains are going to go up and you're going to walk out into your industry and the, the spirit of delay is not going when we look at the prophetic narrative the 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 wall of jericho represented the spirit of delay they have been delayed in the wilderness they have been delayed in the wilderness 11 day journey took 40 years that is the spirit of delay on crack right 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 and so when they went in the wall of jericho represented yet another spirit of delay stonewall stonewalling right the only way that they were going to be able to go deeper into what god had promised and afforded them was that this wall had to be removed it was supernaturally removed god fought for them that's the beauty of the covenant right god will fight for you god will move for you all they did was march god rumbled the land and so a wall they could not scale a wall they could not bust through a wall they could not break down a wall they could not go around god said i this is what i need you to do i need you just to walk and to walk and to walk and when all of y'all are walking what's going to happen is there's going to be something happening underground only i can do this i just need you to be my tool i just need you to be my weapon and i'm going to do everything says that the wall fell down flat the Bible doesn't say that it crumbled piece by piece the Bible doesn't say that on day number three it began to loosen up a little and a couple of the bricks fell off the Bible doesn't say that you know people started on the other side they got a supernatural revelation and they begin to bust loose and they begin to raise the doors no all they had to do was be obedient and God did the rest don't think that if you've been hindered and all of us have by the spirit of delay that this thing is just gonna let you walk in it's gonna let you invade it's gonna let you it's gonna let you it's gonna let you but God is saying this yet again don't look at it look to me I am keeping my covenant and my covenant is in you so I am keeping you you are sheltered in place this is your place the safest place from here on out and forevermore is smack dab in the middle of the will of God. So that means I don't care how uncomfortable you are, how small you feel, inadequate you feel, how uneducated you feel, how you ain't got it. God is saying, listen, if I said for you to be there, that is the safest place for you to be. Why? I'm watching over that place. I'm performing in that place. I'm releasing in that place. 
authority is in that place anointing is in that place assignment is in that place so you've got to get to that place these next two weeks what are you doing we talked yesterday the prayer on the prayer wall if you have not watched it if you have not prayed along listen we talked about the fear and the awe of god if god is saying for you to do anything and at at this point, you are refusing to do it. Where is the fear and the awe of God? We dare not cry out, wisdom, oh wisdom, oh wisdom, and we do not have the fear and the awe of God. Now listen. You telling me I'm supposed to write this, I'm supposed to do this. Well, listen, I feel this way and I feel that way, but I'm still going to do it. I don't know how this going to do. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know. I don't, it, it, it ain't up to me. I'm just, why? The safest place for me to be is smack dab in the, the will of God. Joshua says, well, we're going to walk around. We're going to walk around for six days on the seventh day. And there was a procession of the people and there was the people were lined up in a particular way. What if the priest had said, you know what? We, we, we just don't, we don't agree. We, we, we feel like, you know, what if the dancer said, you know what? I think this is stupid and this is silly. I, I just, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. I just, there are some people on here where you have felt that God has been telling you to praise and worship during this time you have such a joy you have such a song and then when you release that sound because don't everybody else around you's got a midget mindset and a midget mouth set and you feel like oh, well, uh, and so you cause you to stop your song up it's caused you to stop prophesying it's caused you to stop releasing the report of the lord god is saying no no the safest place for you to to be listen there's some people around you who cannot see there's some people around you who don't have no vision. There's some people around you. Listen, all of the people who, who crossed over into the wilderness, they didn't want to go. They, they didn't believe it wholeheartedly. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, right? And so God is saying, I need some cheerleaders. I need some people who won't let my name go. I need some people who won't stop reminding the people that I am God. I need people who will say, listen, this is what thus saith the Lord. Babe, you not in recession, you a responsibility. What are you doing? I need some people who are going to hold some people. I need, don't stop speaking. Just because they're not saying what you say, just because they're not doing what you do. God has put in each of us a different sound for the place that we are sitting. We talked about this before. If you're building on the west side and I'm building on the east side, we're going to be doing two different things, even though we're building the same wall. Your gate wall supports a particular gate that gate is in a particular thing that gate has a particular function and so we're building maybe your side the the bricks they they're double they're double-sided maybe on my side it's not maybe it doesn't need to be that uh that that fortified why because maybe it's it's a gate with water or it's it's shaped differently so the west side and the east side we don't have to be building at the same momentum we don't have to be doing the same thing as long as we're building the same same wall. Oh, because we're building the same wall, right? And so we'll say, well, that prophet is saying this, and they're saying doom and this and this and that. They're on that side of the wall. They're called to that side of the wall. And so there's in the book of Nehemiah, when they were building the wall, the strategy of Nehemiah was to put the man who was building that portion of the wall in front of his house. Why? Because he's going to make sure that that part of the wall is fortified because his house is behind him. His family is behind him. His wife is behind him. His parents are behind him. So that what? And so what's going on over here in that house may be different from what's going on over here in this house. So if you're a prophet and you're called, if you're an intercessor and you are seeing for millennials, you're seeing for millennials. That you, your, your message is to millennials. If you're on this side of the wall and you are seeing and you are hearing apostolically for where the church is going next, your message is going to sound very different than the person who was speaking to millennials. But it's all one wall. It's all one wall.
Is this making sense? So the, the person who's apostolically, who's, who's talking about where the church is going or where the kingdom is going, they're going to be talking about something completely different and it's going to have a very different sound than the person and the millennials. So to the millennials, they may say, you know what? Maybe you don't need a four-year degree. Maybe you don't need to worry about getting your master's. Maybe this is a time where we're going back to getting certifications. And when you're in high school, this is what you have to do. Coding is the new thing. Coding is the new thing. Coding is the new thing. And then you got somebody else on the other side of the wall talking about, okay, church is coming out of the four walls. We're going to see an evangelistic uh, spirit uh, really unfold in these days. We're going to see uh, more and more travel. We're going to have to have uh, different ways and creative ways. What we've known is gone. We're going to see start coming together and the walls are getting ready to start coming down so what would happen if that person stopped decreeing and declaring and speaking and preaching and prophesying to that portion of the wall and ran over here with the millennials i pray y'all i pray this is making sense so for each of us god has given a piece of the wall and so your piece may not be built like my piece because it is doing something different. So what God has downloaded unto you to say, say it and do it and build it. And don't worry about what other people are doing and their portion of the wall because the wall is all going up together. And so when it's time for the gates to be hung, we need the whole wall to be built. Stay in your lane. Pay attention to what you're supposed to be doing. Hone in onto that. Is this making sense? So during this shelter in place, please don't do what they are doing because you have the word of the Lord. You, it's, it's time to be building. It's time to be covenant building. It's time to be covenant praying. It's time to be covenant decreeing. It's time to have covenant co phone calls. It's time to have covenant phone calls. It's time to have, when, when, when you call on people like, listen, this is what I see about you and this is what's happening right now. Have you, what are you doing in this shift? What are you doing right now? Because when the curtain goes up in three weeks, baby, it's going to be go time. It's going to be time to hang the gates. It's going to be time to hang the gates. Are you ready? Are you prepared? What are you doing? Don't tell me you're on social media looking at the news. You're listening to the governor yet again. The governor has a report, but you have the report of the government. The government that oversees the governor. So you need to be releasing the covenant decree of government over the governor over your city and state. You're not in recession, you're in responsibility. So hashtag the best week ever. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for the shelter in place. We thank you, God, that Psalms 91 verse 1 is our it place in the shelter. This is where we seat. This is where we're seated. This is our place of authority. This is where we sit down. We hear, we grab, we hold on to so that we can release by decree, declare, and prayer. Come on. Our shelter in place is a shelter we never leave. Our shelter in place is our dwelling place. Our shelter in place is our habitation. This is not time of a visitation. We are in habitation. They are visiting their shelter in place, waiting for the world to go back as normal. We are habitating our shelter in place, our place of shelter, and we know by way of the spirit realm that nothing is going to be the same. And we know, God, that you are preparing us. Hashtag the best week ever. God, make us ready. God, don't let us be just like we're coming out, we're coming out, we're coming out, we're coming out. We understand that your heartbeat for humanity is that humanity goes in. Goes into what? What's next? What does this look like? What's going to be waiting for us there? Give us insight, foresight, and hindsight, but us stand with you in time and understand what is happening. And so we leave off from conspiracy theories. Come on, guys. We leave off from guessing, is it 5G, is it 10G, is it 4G, is it the OG? And we get into the glory. It doesn't matter what it is. We understand that there is a government over all of the governments in the earth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and those that dwell therein. And so we're happy, we're honing in, we're tapping in, in saith the Lord, for the next 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 years. And so hashtag the best week ever tonight, we repent. Come on, guys.
we repent. We repent for where we have got behind closed doors and we're doing what they do. And we understand that we're supposed to give them the word of what they're supposed to do next. Do you not understand that the people in your region, they're waiting on the people of God to arise and say, this is what you can do. This is what's next. This is what's next in education. This is what's next. This is where we're going that they can't hear because nobody is speaking. And so when we get like they're doing God, we repent. We're not sheltering in place because we're hiding from Corona. <laughs> Whereas we're in the place of shelter and when God circumcise us. Any place in our heart that is not in covenant with you, any place in us that is not in awe of you, any place in us that is not submitted and committed to the covenant that is being released in the realm of the earth right now, God, we repent, circumcise us. Hallelujah. God, we just don't want you to use us here and there. We just, we want you to uh, cause us to be usable. And we want to be that water in Ezekiel chapter 41 that flows from the temple. And everything that touches out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. And everything that touches the water was healed. That's who we want to be. That's what we want to be. We want our ministries to be that water. We want our marriages to be that water. We want our children to be that water. We want our ideas to be that water. We want our prayers to be that water. Oh God, oh God. That's how we, we want to habitate the place of you using us. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so Father, where we've said, oh, we're about to enter into a recession. All oh, these people getting laid off. Well, if they're getting laid off, the Father is saying, will you hire them? And so Father, for every small business, mid-sized business, and every corporation that is supposed to be hiring people and paying benefits and payroll, and you're supposed to have some 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 health benefits, and you're supposed to give people time off when they father that these are the ones who are the shift in the economy that the people who are tuning in are tuned into the realm and the tuning of the spirit and so father I thank you for releasing covenant strategy for covenant business for a covenant economy Hallelujah. And so, Father, we bless you for covenant ideas and covenant planning. I thank you, God, for covenant focus over these next couple of weeks in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that not just the dream of the Lord, but a covenant dream. Thank you, Father, that you are sealing what you are saying in the place of dreaming. Thank you, Father, that you're sealing it. And when we wake up and we decree and we declare it by way of agreement that that thing is sealed into redemption, the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you, God, that we are covenant workers. <laughs> Hallelujah. I thank you, God. Writers. I thank you, Father, for covenant producers. I thank you, God, for the covenant sound. We are the producers of the covenant. We are glory carriers and we are carrying the covenant. Come on, guys. And so, Father, hashtag the best week ever. We decree and we declare that the kingdom participants are taking a turn in the earth. It's a covenant turn. We're turning in the in, in, in the direction of the covenant. We're turning in the, the, the direction of the covenant in this next week in the name in the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, Father, if anybody got on tonight and they were in their feelings and they didn't know what's next and they're like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know if I'm going to have a job. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know about rent. I don't know about this. I don't bow. We decree and declare Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first. Manda Shokosa. And so behind the door is a people who will seek you first. Your kingdom, your reign, your domain, your rule, your authorship, your authority, your principles. And so the verse ab above that in 32 and the verse above that in 31, it talks about the who don't have the covenant or who are not assigned on to the covenant. They worry about what they shall eat, drink, and wear. They think about what they shall eat, drink, and wear. We have the covenant. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, we're asking you to cause us to come up higher. To come up higher, to engage you and to embrace you in the covenant. Thank you, Father, that we're going back and we're sitting down at the desk of covenant. And that you would restate and you would release what we have forgotten. What we didn't think was real, what we thought was a lie, every word of the 
boom, that the people moved off the table because they said the prophet lied. Or I didn't hear from God because they didn't understand timing. We bring it back to the table tonight in intercession. And anything that we moved off the table, anything that we moved off the altar, because we said this was er error, it was wrong, it was the spirit of false prophecy, that is really the Antichrist, but anyway, we put it back and we say, okay, uh, King of Glory. Okay, King of Glory, we bring it back. Every word of the Lord that you, your people have forgotten, God, I'm asking you to bring it back through the Holy Spirit. Every word from the time you was 10, that you have forgotten. Holy Spirit, bring it back to their remembrance. Holy Spirit, bring it back to them in their dreams. Holy Spirit, bring it back to them in conversation and let them engage it with such a fervency and such a profound weight that this is the command of the Lord over my life. God commanded me to be full. God commanded me to multiply in this. God commanded me to have dominion in this. And so, Father, we take this time seriously. Come on, guys. We take this time seriously. And so, God, where people feel like I don't know what's next or I don't know what to do, well, God, you do. If any man lacks wisdom, John James 1, 5, we ask you tonight, we agree needing wisdom, the sound of of the people praying for wisdom, the sound of the bride praying for wisdom, the sound of the kingdom participants praying for wisdom. And we believe, God, that you will give it to us liberally and without reproach. We, I thank you, Father, that this week our prayers will be like arrows, sharpshooters, that we will not look at the reports in the earth and feel like, oh, people are dying, so our prayers aren't working. People are still getting sick, or our prayers aren't working in place. Our prayers aren't working. Thank you, Father, that we'll be able to see in the realm of the Spirit. And when we pray, we believe that you hear us. And if you hear us, we have what we have asked for. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus, this will be a week that we are asking you because we believe in the sound of healing. We believe that, God, you are Jehovah Rapha, God of our wholeness. And, God, when we pray, we send forth to what we're praying. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that there will be a release of the testimony of Jesus Christ within the nations. And so there's a people who are now moving to the next phase. This thing's got phases, guys. This thing's got phases. And so, Father, we thank you that we're moving to the next phase. We're praying into the next phase of this covenant release. We're moving, we're decreeing into the next phase of this covenant release. And so hashtag the best week ever. May this be the most productive 2020. We understand when you look through the scripture in the book of Exodus that God tells Moses that this is really the beginning of the year. This marks this month marks the beginning of the year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So when you thought that January 1, 2020 was the new year and the new decade, Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. I dare you to get your communion and I dare you to celebrate like you about to party like it's 1999. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. It starts right now. Happy New Year. Jesus making his way, his triumphant entry into, come on, the city of Jerusalem and everything. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, my soul rabbi shite. Happy New Year, Happy New Year. Come on, guys. Oh, and I said to you, it is still in place. It is still working. It is still breathing. It is still moving. I don't care about new world orders and 
one government and one currency and one this and one that. Why? Because I serve the one Savior, one God, one Spirit. Come on. Come on. Come on. You're not afraid of a, of a one world government, are you? I know you're not afraid of a world currency, are you? We've got work to do. We've got work to do. We've got to set up systems. We've got work to do. I know we're not talking about trees. 5G, 4G, 10G, 100G, it won't come now your dwelling. It won't come now your dwelling. And who knows, somebody on here may have the invention. The invention. You put something in your clothes or you, you drink something or you eat something and you become immune. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's begin to pray for the inventors, guys. For everything that is released to hurt God's heartbeat, God's got the antidote and he's got the bomb. Let's begin to pray. Are y'all hear me? Let's begin to pray for the inventors and the innovators. Let's begin to pray for the people who are doing the research and the science that God would visit them. Come on, God would visit them and they would put it together and then God would send the people who would sow. God would send the backers. We've got work to do. We've got work to do. You think God We've got work to do. We've got all these resources. We've got work to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So your shelter is in place. You live in the place of shelter. Psalms 91 verse 1. That's where you dwell. That's where you habitate. Not where you visit. It's where you habitate. You've got work to do. You've got work to do. You've got work to do. The enemy is shaking us because what heaven has released. And so, Father, we bless you for this week. We bless you that while nobody can see, because everybody's behind closed doors, that there is such a changing of the guard. There is such a leveling of the playing field. There's an unseating and a seating that's happening. And so we pray covenant prayers. We agree a covenant agreement. Yes, life as we know it is, is over. We're out of the wilderness. Now it's the, we're in the place of responsibility. And so Father, we, we accept the challenge. We're ready, we were built for this place. And so we honor you, we love you, we praise you. Thank you for letting us be born in a time such as this. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 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 I pray you're excited. I pray you're excited. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. There are people out there, guys, who are mourning and they don't have no strength. There are people out there who are brokenhearted and they do not have any strength. God says you've got to be for them. God says you've got to be strength for them. God says you've got to get in front of some stuff and you've got this supposed to be a season of a bunch of suicides because people don't know what to do. God says, no, 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 no. I send my people. I send my people. I send my people and the joy of the Lord. You're talking about people wearing masks and the contagion and it's airborne. Baby, that joy you got is airborne. That, that sound of prayer you got is airborne. Come on, guys. When you say hello and you release, come on, the voice of God in that hello. The Bible says that Mary walked in the door and she greeted Elizabeth and the baby leaped salutation. She said, hello. She didn't say, and thus saith the Lord. Lift your hands, Elizabeth. She said, hello. 
at the salutation of Mary. At the salutation of Mary. Listen, your salutation is causing life to spring up. The salutation is releasing the Holy Spirit. Your hello when you walk into Walmart is causing people who had symptoms of coronavirus, that thing to flee before the sound of God. Hello, 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 hell at the salutation of Mary. I need y'all listen, 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 listen. You have no idea how God is using you because a lot of times all she did was went to go see her cousin. The Lord said, go see her cousin. That's all she went to go see her cousin. He didn't say, and you're going to go and see Elizabeth and the Holy Spirit is going to come upon mother and child. She walked and said, hey, Elizabeth, and the Holy Spirit came upon. Read it for yourself. Elizabeth and the baby. Her salutation, her salutation, her salutation, your salutation. Don't be getting on social media all willy nilly. You got to understand that when you type, I am releasing the Holy Spirit. There's going to be some people on here who wanted to commit suicide. But I'm getting on here because God told me to get on here. I'm just not scrolling all mindlessly. I understand that when I scroll, that I am releasing the wind of God. God used all of my function. God used all of my activity. God used all of my words to fight back, push back, to pound the head of the enemy. We plunge everything we do in the blood of Jesus. Hello. Hallelujah. <laughs> Listen, get excited, get excited, get excited, get excited, get it. Because life as you know it is over. Life as you know it is, it's over. And where you didn't have a foot in the door, your whole person is in the door. You never owned a thing. Look like I couldn't get a break. Been all your life. Now look at you, you and your whole lineage. Listen, life as you know it is over. You're, out, you're not in recession, you're in responsibility. Amen? Amen. So hashtag the best week ever. I love you guys. We'll be on tomorrow because I don't want you to miss this. 6 p.m. It's going to bless you. 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 Amen. I love you guys. Good night.